this is the meeting of uh, Economic and Community Development, Housing and Land Use, October 7th. Um, I'm Jesse Adams, Chair. We have members present. We have um, Ms. DeWitt from the Planning Board, uh, Councillor Ryan O'Donnell from Ward 3, Councillor Gina Luis Ciara from Ward 4. And absent, we have Ward 2, Councillor Paul Spector and Kevin Lake, who's the liaison from the Conservation Commission. Um, <clears throat> this meeting's audio and video recorded. It doesn't appear there's any public comment. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of July 1st? Move to approve. Second. Is there any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, now I move to the uh, ordinance, plastic bag and styrofoam ordinance, which is 14. <coughs> 229 and uh, what I'd like to do is if, uh, if the committee doesn't mind give a brief overview of it and if by brief I'll try to make it less than 10 minutes of, well, I'll try to make less than 15 minutes um, okay just brief background Councillor Paul Spector and I about a year ago wanted to do this and we also want to do well maybe this I mean the ultimate goal is to do a plastic bag ban ordinance and uh, we want to do styrofoam as well we were going to do styrofoam first but for various reasons which are probably irrelevant we decided to do both of them and um, I originally drafted a, a oh, here's Mr. Um, I originally drafted a styrofoam ordinance and then it turned we, we decided to do both styrofoam and plastic um, Councillor Spector and I work together on this. For some reason, the paper seems to make it sound like this is like my thing solely. It's, it's not. Um, we've worked together since the very beginning on this. And um, what I did was I, I synthesized, um, um, just to note in the minutes, um, Mr. Lake is present. Yeah. I, what I did was um, I took the styrofoam ban ordinance, excuse me, yeah, the styrofoam ban ordinance from Amherst, the bylaw, and the Brookline bylaw on plastic bag banning, and um, synthesized those, redrafted it, and used a model ordinance in, from Greenfield, which actually has not been presented as of yet, but I used various ideas and, and language from it. And I also spoke to the drafter of that ordinance from Greenfield. Um, so it was very complex to draft. The purpose is for environmental reasons, um, you know, just basically this a good thing for the environment. Um, plastic bags are, you know, contribute to the waste stream and take a very, very, very long time to biodegrade and don't really biodegrade. Um, styrene is on the National Toxicology list of carcinogens and, um, and the concern is that the, the when it's when served with hot prepared foods, they could uh, leach. So those those are the basic justifications justifications for it. I know that Northampton has been very committed to the environment and sustainability. So uh, now maybe I'll, I'll walk through some of it to try to address um, some of the ordinance itself, and just point out some things that I think are important. Point out some things that I don't think are well known, and hopefully by the end of the process will be well known. And uh, and also talk about why I chose this model when drafting it. Um, Councilor O'Donnell, you brought up a good point on the radio I heard about, you know, there are many models out there. So, you know, why this model? So I'd like to address that too, to the point. Um, so the definitions, one thing I think it's important to point out in the definitions is that um, for very small businesses, if you're under 2,000 feet and you're in retail, you're exempt. Um, just for comparative purposes, when I went to Sirio's Market to talk about this ordinance, um, Mr. Golick, he told me that his space is just under 2,000 feet. They, they've done with plastic bags, but I'm just pointing out for comparative purposes that that's, that's a, a business of that size is under 2,000 feet um, and, would, and would be exempt. So for the smaller businesses that this may pose a hardship to, they may not even necessarily fall under um, the ordinance. Uh, there's also, if you have two locations under the same in the city for a total of 2,000 um, feet, then you're bound to the ordinance as well. Retail food establishment has the same 2,000 square foot rule. <clears throat> C 
So then we come to the shopping bag definitions. Um, it's important to note that this ordinance applies to bags with a, with a thickness of 3.0 mils or less and are intended for single use transport and purchase products. So uh, if the bags are thick enough and you know are for reuse, have you know have handles and that sort of thing, or even you know, but but if they're three three mils or, or thicker, those are reuse bags. And in any any business who has who are using bags of that thickness are are uh, won't have to change their practices under this ordinance. Um, I think that's all I'll, I'll address on, on that section. Now we get to section three, which is really the part of the ordinance that's most important because it states that for those businesses that, that apply under 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, um, the thin film single use plastic bags will be banned and um, the bags will have to be reusable or biodegradable or compostable. And also, the next section importantly talks about the, the, uh, the styrofoam piece of it. It's very important for people to know, people actually asked me this question today, that it only applies to hot foods. So, you know, someone said, what about those styrofoam cups of soup, for example, that we just add hot water, you know, that you buy off the shelves in some supermarket, that doesn't apply. Um, similarly, uh, for example, meat that you would buy at the supermarket, there's a styrofoam bottom, you know, meat, chicken or meat, whatever, and then there's plastic, you know, on top, that doesn't apply because that's, not prepared food because you have to do something else to the food in order to serve it. So it would be prepared food under the ordinance, and 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 so it would uh, it would be if it's not prepared food, it's exempted from the ordinance as written. Um, and here here's something that's important because the the exemptions are, are important. And I don't think the public is well aware of these exemptions yet. Dry cleaning is exempt from the newspaper bags that we were talking about. Um, produce, meat, bulk foods, wet items, and, and, and other similar items. Despite that those, those are thin, thin, film, thin film plastic and single use, those are not banned. So um, businesses, um, supermarkets can still use those. And importantly, for people who, you know, the question about what to do with dog refuse, people can use those. Um, <clears throat> is this? because there's just so much more of the grocery store bags? I thought it's I mean, why have you chosen what's in and what's out? I, I, I chose to exempt these because it, uh, I think if these are allowed, it really reduces some burden, but there still will be a strong um, benefit to the ordinance because of the other things that, are, that will be excluded from the city. I just feel There's that... There's an easy alternative to groceries, less of, less of an easy alternative to uh, dry cleaning? I mean, in terms of the options? I, 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 I would think that it would be a much... Right, I think that would be a much greater burden for dry cleaners to have to find an alternative. Um, if that answers the question. And so... Any food packaging during during used during direct care at hospitals and nursing homes. Um, I was thinking about just considering adding um, churches because of you know some churches give give um, free meals out to homeless or hungry people, and certainly you know that, that's if if that would create a significant burden. No, you know we might not want that. So that's something else I've been thinking about adding, but I haven't added as of yet. Well, could you? I'm sorry. Could you phrase it? As um, like food banks or food pantries or um, sure. soup kitchens. Yep. Like yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That might be better. Yeah. Thank you. Um, if I could just stop here, I can make notes. Um, but those are the exemptions. You know, anything else that there there are no no easy substitutes or not easy available substitutes. People can get an exemption, but I'll get to that because that's listed uh, down further down. The, the, the enforcement agency will be the health department. And what I'd like to do is, is uh, reach out to the, the health department and ask them if they would be willing, if it's possible for them to 
um, state exactly what it is they'll be looking for, define what, what, what a hardship deferment would be, so that, you know, I, one business owner told me that they don't want that to be up in the air and just, you know, left to whims, which I don't think it would be. But if, they, if, the, if the department specifically put out its policy on that, maybe that would uh, help people because it would be more concrete. The, the penalty is, is um, first, first there's a warning issue for, um, before, any, before any monetary penalties are, are issued. It's $50 for the first offense, 100 for the second offense, and 100 for all subsequent offenses. Um, and, and there can only be one penalty imposed every seven days. So, I mean, frankly, it's, it's not the stiffest of penalties, and hopefully businesses will just be, be in compliance with it, but I think it's important not to have extremely stiff penalties at, at first, but if it turns out that there are businesses that would rather pay the weekly $100 than convert, that can be revisited at any point. Um, the date of effect is November 1st, 2016. Councilor Specter and I wanted to be as generous as possible with, with the length of time that, 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 we, that businesses are given if this passes to, to comply, which is why that date may seem far away, and it is. Um, but that, we might want to revisit that. And the reason why I say that is because there is a state, there is a bill in the legislature on banning plastic bags. And you know, if, if, if it's far enough in the future, and the state, if the state passes the ordinance by 2016, then you know, that's, that's good, that's excellent. But for the purposes of this ordinance, well, perhaps it is too lenient. Um, maybe it should, some other communities do, for example, six months after the date that, that, the, uh, that, that it passes, if it passes. And, and that's fair because for several reasons. Well, if, if if a business is experiencing hardship and qualifies for a hardship, well, they, can, they don't have to comply for a period of time anyhow. And the ordinance doesn't apply to any bags purchased prior to the enactment of the ordinance. So there's always the possibility that, they, that businesses could stock up on bags. And I mean, hopefully, I would hope that wouldn't happen, but it's only fair to allow them to do that. Um, but something that's very important about deferments is that there are two ways you can get a hardship deferment. One is if, if, if a business can demonstrate that the ordinance would cause significant economic difficulty or there is no readily available substitute. And the way it works is that a um, business can get a one-year exemption and they can get up to two more one-year exemptions, which takes them, you know, if, this, if, if, if the ordinance as written passed, businesses who are experiencing a, a hardship wouldn't have to comply until 2019. So that's, 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 a, that's a very long time to comply. Um, that's important to know. <clears throat> but it's important to know that there's a, a one-year hardship period and then the possibility of two additional periods if it's shown to the Board of Health that there are those, there are those continue, continuous hardships. If I could just speak quickly to uh, your Councilor Donna's good point about why this model. Um, I'm not sure if it's legal in this state to mandate a fee be imposed. I'm just not sure, but also I wouldn't, I wouldn't prefer that model anyhow because I wouldn't want this to, to become a revenue stream for the city. I, I think that's unfair to, to uh, businesses to, to not only be forced to comply if it passes, but to create a revenue stream for the city and become a collector for the city. Um, I'd like to give them the options of, of uh, how they want to deal with it. If they want to create an incentive system like some supermarkets do where they give out coupons for people who bring their own bags, or if they just want to you know, create some sort of program to encourage people using their own bags, or if they just want to use solely paper, uh, I, just want, I want the businesses to have a, a more leeway than mandating that they become collectors of a fee. So. Those are my reasoning, that's my reasoning for, well, that's the reason that Paul Spector and I used for this particular model. I think it, um, it, it leaves some room for leeway for, for the businesses to decide how they want to comply with it. So that's, that's my introduction. I'll open the floor. Um, is there, is there research 
uh, that you found that shows that bags over three mils, so that what are termed reusable are actually reused, and that there's a reason to keep them in the stream because they're used enough that they're not, they don't end up in landfills enough to make that. Yeah, the theory is that those thicker bags are, are, are simply, they're, they are reused more. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have I don't have that on, I, I, um, but you know that it's it's they're typically found to be reused more than the, than the thinner ones, mm -hmm. um, so they are commonly reused more. Does, does the um, does Brookline have um, a hardship policy, and do you know they, what constitutes? They do. I could actually pull it up, but thank you. I actually wanted to bring this up. My hardship policy was by far the most lenient that I've, that I've seen in any model. Um, with length of time of deferments, how many you can get. Um, others may have a one-year period. I don't, I don't recall seeing any of that allowed multiple one-year, you know, let alone up to three like, like, the, like, the, uh, like the way I've drafted it. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, how long has the Burbank policy been over? Don't call me on this. I think it passed. I think it was about a year ago. And do you have any idea of, of its functioning? How well it, whether they've got issues, whether they changed things, how well it's functioning? I, I haven't seen anything written about it. I've been trying to follow it. I haven't, I haven't seen anything written about it. Um, California just did it statewide. So do we know if their uh, definitions for the various categories, both for the type of bags, the empty or excluded, and so forth, is a similar structure? I don't know that because I've, I've been following the passage of that law there, and I haven't I haven't seen the actual yeah, the, the actual text right, of, yeah. of the ordinance. Of Everybody's the, talking about state, state or, you know, or Right, go right. Even be in this kind of exactly, exactly. Regulation. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I've been trying to find the actual text of it myself, and I haven't seen it as of yet. Yeah, I haven't either. Mm -hmm. yeah. How does the state bill compare to what what you're proposing? I, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I haven't seen the state bill text, unfortunately. If it were stricter with, and we had not passed this. Um, would we think about amending it? If, if, if it passes at all, there would be, there'd be you know, if it, if it If that passed before this passed, I would withdraw. Because we're about to whatever they do. What if we saw it before? I mean, if we still had the opportunity to pass this, and we could see what they were considering. Yeah, well, actually, I should take that back. They wouldn't withdraw it. I mean, if theirs is far more lenient than ours, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just, I, I, I assume that they're relatively similar, but I shouldn't assume that. Um, if, if they were, um, it really, it, it, it probably would be important to compare the two and see if, um, if ours, would, you know, if, if, what, if what's intended to be done at the state level is sufficient. I, I was told by um, two different representatives that it's, you know, in committee, and it's hard to say when it will leave at what point. So I'm not really familiar with that process, but that sounds to me like no time soon, but that's just my interpretation. Do we have any data, because uh, there are uh, like Whole Foods or uh, places that already use compostable uh, packaging. Uh, do, do we know what the cost difference is? I don't have exact numbers on the on the on the, on the uh, cost differences. I, I won't name businesses, but I've reached out to some to three of the largest businesses in the community that will be affected by this, and I reached out several times over a few month period, and they just never got back to me. So um, I don't have those actual numbers. Um, so businesses of is it two thousand square feet? That's right. They, they'd be exempt. They wouldn't. This, this ordinance wouldn't apply to. Okay. Okay. Under two thousand square feet. Um, 
I mean, is that a magic number for any reason? You said that Syria um, is about 2,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. But does, does, does physical size correlate well to whether the business is big or small in terms of an economic sense? Does it does it indicate the number of bags they use? Is that kind of the rationale? Oh, I'm just not shaking my head. Yes. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, does it have to do anything to do with volume, or is it just right? Is yeah, it about yeah. you know how how much business they do generally? It's about how you know are they a big chain store versus are they a local store? Just what if you could eliminate that. Well, well, the reason why I chose two thousand, I think, well, other groups have done differently, is that. Because because of the presumption that, that they're that they are smaller doing smaller volume and it, there's a possibility that would affect them mm -hmm. um, to a greater extent if uh, if they weren't exempted. I'll give an example: the cornucopia definitely fits within that, and they've done away with plastic mm -hmm. if they ever have. Strongly in favor of this because a uh, uh, person often boats often in boats out in salt water, and that some distance from land, and there's so much of this stuff out there that it seems like yeah, there's, there has to be um, efforts made to reduce the stream. Um, I, I do think it would be useful um, before it goes forward in, uh, into the public that there is information available about what the economic consequences are likely to be for X number of thousands of bags for retail establishment if they had to switch to an alternative. Um, because it, my, my suspicion is that it's a relatively small portion of their operating costs to begin with, and that if there's a few pennies difference, it's not going to make, uh, in the long run, much difference. But I, that's, an, that's an intuition in the data to base that on. Mm -hmm. um, if it were to turn out that a uh, business is really going to be seriously affected um, economically, um, it would be good to know what kind of business, is, um, how great an effect, uh, is there a definition that could be modified uh, in order to, to ease the burden on that type of business or without the economic information it's hard to and it also is uh, going to be on the guess. Uh, if people say, oh, well, there's you know, burdensome regulation on business, to counter that, but, well, it's not very burdensome because it only adds X percent. Well, with, without the data, it's hard to make the counter. I think that's a good point. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I wish I could find a more research before. <coughs> But it's it's difficult because um, we know that. But but uh, no, those are good points. Well, I'll look. Well, uh, and I'll I'll, I'll, um, I'll check around to see what I can find. Out. Thank you. Thank you. Send you in the, thank you. That'll be helpful. Uh, I know I've heard some concerns that um, uh, some of these bigger like uh, supermarkets that use these kind of bags um, sort of an unexpected positive effect to them using those bags is that they created these places as you go in where you can recycle plastic bags and other plastic stuff. And, um, and there's concern that if they no longer will, can use these bags, that that resource for recycling plastic will go away. And, and um, is there any thought of trying to figure out another way that uh, the city could provide that service um, without maybe needing a sticker for the dump? Is there there's some, have you considered a possibility that um, of another way to help people recycle plastic of any kind? Um, it's, it's difficult to, to, to mandate that in an ordinance, I think. Um, I mean, I, 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 would, I would hope that the city would be willing to cooperate and do that sort of thing, but it'd be difficult to to mandate in the ordinance that they get any more you know, city resources. Um, you know, it does it already 
adds another burden to a department. The department of Health has to enforce this. But 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 I think I've heard some really good points about that, and I, I agree with you that it'd be sad to to, um, to lose those programs mm -hmm. if they were to go away. Um, and I hope they don't. But it's uh, I hope they don't go away. If they do, I still think there's a much greater good that comes out of this ordinance because of what will be reduced from the waste stream um, and, and et cetera. But, but I hope that those programs don't go by the wayside entirely. And if there is a way to promote them, I, I hope the city will consider it. I would help promote it. But it, I think if it require additional city resources, I haven't really had those conversations with the, you know, with the BPW or the mayor. Those were separate, sort of separate things. Interesting, positive thing that's come out of having plastic bags. Yeah, I agree. I would imagine the overwhelming number of the bags that go into the grocery store boxes are grocery store bags. And if they were eliminated, then there's not someplace else. I mean, because that's, and I don't think they're using the motor. They must be shipping them back to the. Yeah, I think they recycle them in some way. But I, people have said that they use that service for things other than the bags they get from, from the grocery okay. store, for other, or from plastic bags they get from elsewhere um, that might be over three mil or mm -hmm. packing material that's plastic, things like that. Okay. Into those things at the grocery store? Yeah, because there you can put any plastic. No, I didn't realize that. Um, okay. That kind of, not like hard plastic. So the enforcing department is the, the Board of Health, not, not the Department of Health? Um, health department. Well, well, the, well, the, well, no, the health, the health department enforces, but um, the, the, <coughs> the, under 5.1, the health department, or its designee, is the, is the enforcement agency. Um, but the Board of Health would issue the deferments if there were <coughs> deferments to be issued. Okay. Then I would just note perhaps a typo in the second ordinance that um, adds the non-criminal disposition related to your ordinance, which <coughs> says Board of Health rather than Health Department. That's correct. Thank you. That should be, that okay. should be, that should be correct. Would, would you make a motion to that effect? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I move that we in the uh, in the ordinance listing the non-criminal disposition that we uh, change the Board of Health to Health Department. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Sure. For a discussion on the ordinance. Thank you for your hard work on it. Great step forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the uh, to, to one one question. You, um, uh, I'm guessing that there was a just for sure that probably the hospital. I'm not sure to think of who puts out um, the most volume of this kind of stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm, I don't know for sure about the college. Uh, I'm guessing the hospital for sure puts out a lot of it because it, they have paper cups, but they also have styrofoam cups in place and so forth. Um, have they been approached uh, and have they had a response? Well, they're, they're exempted um, under 4.3. From the from the food packaging, uh, they're they're exempted. Ah, hospitals and nursing homes. This is fast food, essentially, isn't it? That's going to have the biggest volume. I think they used. I don't think they. I think they moved mostly to cardboard. 
Yeah, I don't think the fast food restaurants works. I don't either. <laughs> so I don't know, I guess. I think it's mostly cardboard and paper. I think you're right. What is the survival? Is the survival center ever use plastic bags? You give us stuff away? Um, okay. The survival center doesn't use that film. They have they have some bags that are slightly. I don't think that I don't think that it's that light film. By and large, they try to get boxes and use other things, really? okay. but uh, um, I suspect it's not that light. I'll find out when I go there. Okay. And bulk okay. food is exempt, right? The plastic bags get the bulk food items are exempt. Like if you are, if you have a bulk food item that you're taking from a bin and putting into a bag, the, those bags are exempt. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. um, Which yeah. maybe the survival center uses for. If they're the, if they're, then they should be exempted under. Uh, I, I believe they're under, exempt under 4.1. Yeah, it's 4.1. Right, yeah. So that might be what would fall under for the survival I think that's actually one of the most important things for people to know, is that th those are not banned. Um, the exemption section is actually very important. Mm -hmm. so something to explore might be asking the enforcing agency to keep records and publish kind of an annual report on how many stores are using this and how many exemptions there were and how many fines were given. So you could kind of track the effectiveness of the ordinance over time. That's a good idea. They may well do that themselves without our prompting. Considering the, the magnitude of the exemptions and how generous it is when it's going to take effect, and the 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 the, the, the possible length of time that businesses can get deferment if they qualify, I think maybe some of that should possibly should maybe should should up. But people have to understand those pieces and go beyond the headline. Mm -hmm. I think when you go beyond the headline, it's actually quite a an easy going version of this kind of yeah of it's, it doesn't ban most uses right it's a, it's an attempt to be fair but have some positive environmental impact and right. balance those things um, but I think I think maybe it really should be considered the, the date of effect of the ordinance and if if if, if the exemptions that I propose that we proposed are are uh, too lengthy or too many. Is there any further discussion? Um, did did we want to take up the penalty section? I, mean, I don't know if there's much to discuss on that or it's, it just changes the code so that the proper section has the proper enforcement mechanism. One thing to consider too, uh, to your point, is that maybe maybe the fine should be stiffer if we're if we're you know, given the uh, given how comparatively this could be viewed as a, a lenient ordinance compared to the other communities that have done it. Um, that can also be considered. 
But if, if there's nothing else, we have, we have a couple of options. Um, Councilor Spector, who's the co-sponsor on this, isn't here today. And I don't know if the committee feels like it wants another meeting so they can be here to weigh in. Um, here's some of the things we've talked about. Or if it wants to send it on now with a recommendation. Um, if we have a whole other meeting, some of this conversation may be redundant, and there will be other points for Councilor Spector to weigh in. So I'm not sure if, if the committee chooses to would, would choose to um, send it forward at this point with recommendation. It's got a lot of other committees that's got to go to. It's got to be discussed. Okay. I mean, I, I defer to you as one of the sponsors of the ordinance. If you if you think it's important that Councilor Spector here is going to weigh in, that's fine with me personally. If you don't think it's of great importance, then, I mean, my, my only other question is, I mean, are we going to actively solicit, wh where, where is the forum for kind of broader community input? I know you've done a lot of work already, which is great, soliciting uh, input from businesses and that kind of thing, but does it, does it look like we're jumping the gun by passing out of the committee today, or? Um, it's a question, I guess, for the. For there's there's going to be one, minimum, maybe only one, but at least one, public forum outside of the regular committee process. Um, so aside from the other committees that I'll be going to, there will be a public forum that hopefully businesses can come and weigh in directly. So I, I, I'd i be happy to share the notes that I have taken from this committee meeting with Council Respector, and then you know we can just forego having another meeting for his attendance. Um, so, is there a motion in that effect to, to send these two ordinances? We can take them together as a group, I think. Um, forward with a positive recommendation. Um, the, the only, just briefly, the only other concern I, I have is, I mean, because of kind of the length and complexity of the ordinance, um, I, I, I hate to hold it up, especially because it's going to go to other committees, but. Um, I don't know, it might be worth more review before we pass it out, but I mean, I, I, if someone makes the motion, I'm happy to support it because I think it will have the review. Well, I'm, I'm fine if there's no motion because this is the Economic Community Development Housing Land Use Committee. It, it, it would be a good place for businesses, business owners and other people affected to weigh in here. We can give them an extra opportunity if we want and at the same time give Council Respect the opportunity. I mean, so that's fine. I feel that works for, for your ordinance and doesn't unduly burden it or hold it up. No, I think it's fine to, to, to put this discussion over again until next month before before we uh, before we give it a recommendation. We were, we'd be within the rules, okay. within the time the rules allow, allow for a, a measure to stay within the committee if we kept it here for another month. Can I make one brief comment? I mean, I don't sure. know, yeah, because no one's made a motion yet. Um, on the non-criminal disposition table. I'm not sure if this is more a question. Um, in this table, ought we to specify that this fine comes only once every seven days as well? I'm not sure if that belongs in this table. I know it's said in your other ordinance, but. I don't think it belongs in this table. Here's why I think that. Okay. I could be wrong, but if you, if you, this, if you pull up this section, you can see the entire table. Yeah. And none the of them none of them have it. Um, no, no, if there's no motion, we'll just move on to new business. Oh, okay. Unless there is a motion. Well, I, well actually, I'm sorry. Yeah. Is there, is there a motion to continue? Sure. Right. Move, we continue. Second. Is there any further discussion on the continuance? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there any new business? Motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you.